Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on today's video on what I feel is one of the most remarkable pieces of history ever. The 560 SL run, first off, powerful, expensive, exclusive, exclusive because it was expensive, right? And then when you find like original paint cars, original low mileage cars, cars that uh, have every book, every service record, every window sticker, just all of the nice pieces that go along with it, those are the cars that I call blue chip investments as I watch these cars now starting to go up. Right? I talked about this years and years ago where these cars were uh, at a great price. They're still at a really, really great price. However, just like Porsche 911s, they're now going up in value, and this is the time to get in. All right, so what I like to do a lot of times is talk about the quality of the paint. I like to let black cars like this speak for themselves. Keep in mind we're under these harsh lights or whatever. You need to see, come on up here, check out the quality of this paint. You can read every last letter. You can see the tag on the front of this car. This right here, my friends, is one really, really beautifully taken care of black Mercedes. All right, so a lot of times people say to me, wow, that's a great looking car, but you don't really know why. I know for a fact when I look at a car, I look at a car differently than maybe others do because it's what I do every single day. So the first thing I look at a car is the tires. You see the tone. How could you possibly know about a car with its tires? Well, I'll tell you why. For instance, if it's my baby and it's what I love and I want to take care of it, like this car right here, I'm going to put the very best tires I can put on there. I'm not going to overpay for them, but I'm going to put the best tires on, right? If it's a lease turn in, I need to dump it and get rid of it, I'm going to put the cheapest set of tires I can get there. I walked up to this car here, had a fresh set of Michelins on it. Also had these upgraded. These are chrome wheels. These are very expensive to do because you have to take the factory wheels, send them out, have them triple plated chrome, and that done too. This right here, this pinstripe, is not tape. It's a hand painted pinstripe on this car, right? This is the detail stuff that somebody really loved everything about this car. Then you throw in things like this hard top. This hard top is beautiful. Check out the condition inside this headliner. It's like brand new. It gives you two totally different looks with the car. When the top's up, you got a convertible. When the top's down, you got a super convertible. And when you have this on, you got this great looking coupe. Painted, looks completely different in the winter time. And you can enjoy all weather driving. Uh, in a car like this. All right, so we're going to take a peek under the hood. One of the things I'd like to do is to tell people, hey, why don't you go check out underneath the hood because it's beautifully detailed. You send them out. They are out here for a half hour just trying to find the release. I'll show you where it is. It's hidden inside, right? Inside here, the Mercedes Star. All right, and that's how you open that. So this is a big deal to me, and I'm going to share with you why collector cars, uh, some are worth more than others. In the case of this car here, we know that this car has the original sheet metal in it, and it hasn't been in an accident and panels replaced. Here's how you know that. First off, the VIN numbers here on the core support, right? This supports this whole radiator and core of this area here. The original tags and decals are on here, as well as the VIN numbers are still on each fender over here on both sides. They were part of an anti-theft program and etched into the car and a label put on there as well. I also see how clean and beautiful it is here. When you're talking about a car with 49,000 miles on it, that's been serviced, detailed, and loved its whole life. This is what you end up with. All right, so this is great styling on this car. The reason why it's so squatty like this from behind, it just looks so Beverly Hills elegant. Like, I don't know where this car best shines, whether it's right here in the D.C. area because you don't run into many of them. Does it go to the West Coast? I mean, it's just so well preserved. I don't really know that answer. But some of the detail stuff that you'll see, let's, hold on a second. This alone is so solid feeling. The carpeting in here is beautiful. I wanted to take this off here so I could see. Uh, this has the setup for the battery. It also has a battery tender on it as well uh, because I guess it wasn't driven very much. So uh, you want to make sure you kept your battery charged all the time. It has the lead on it for that. Uh, spare tire still in here, tools, all that good stuff. And just beautifully, beautifully shiny, shiny, and shiny. I want to show you the top. The top is in like, like, I don't want to say it's in brand new condition, but it is in such brand new condition. It might be brand new. It appears to be original. It's got the beautiful threads in here. It says Reno glass on the side, Mercedes Benz top. It's been re if it's been replaced, uh, they definitely didn't do an aftermarket version of it. There went my fingers, right? That little lid just makes such a nice little difference. They also sell a little seat for the back of here, believe it or not, that uh, you can put a pets or a seat belt or something like that in there. All right, so I want to get inside with you, kind of talk a little bit. But before we get inside, let's not get inside because I want you to hear this. No secondary rattles, no parts. This is a heavy, real deal door, man. This is like, you know, this is when Mercedes really was 
Mercedes, and it was the best you could get, and it, it's evident of that. This model and this example in particular, I feel holds a lot of that in truth. For instance, a lot of times you'll see uh, the cracked clear in the wood. This wood's in almost perfect condition, probably because this car was climate controlled, meaning it was in a heated and air-conditioned garage at home. Maybe if they drove it to work or parked on their ground or something like that. Uh, the dash is beautiful, not cracked. 47,932 original miles. We're talking like 1,500 miles a year this car has been driven. Think about that for a second. Most of the time, people have gotten 250,000 miles out of these cars before they needed an engine rebuild and uh, full gauges. And what a lot of people don't know, believe it or not, is how powerful and fast these are. These have overdrive automatic transmissions in them, and they're 5.6 liters, which means that Mercedes, when they make power, they don't need big V8s, but they shove this 5.6 liter engine in this little car, and it rolls on down the road. And again, it was their most expensive car at the time, too, don't forget. Uh, when we did the, the math on this, it was uh, original $65,740 uh, was the original uh, MSRP, or $65,700, whatever it was, and it's $1989. Those dollars today is almost $150,000. That's why these are now going up in value, just like we talked about earlier, like the 911s. That's why it's so important to get on the ground floor on this instead of buying up here. All right, so we close up this video and we talk about one of the most powerful cars of 1989. The cars are fast and they handle well and they have so many things underneath you don't notice, like four-wheel disc brakes, four-wheel fully independent suspension, right? Uh, the climate control, two tops, the color, the wheels, the tires, on and on and on. This is just, uh, I get excited because you don't run across cars like this. We've seen lots of these with 70,000, 100,000, 200,000. But when you find a car of 47,000 original miles 30 plus years later, that is one cool piece of history. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this one here. Don't forget, uh, if you don't mind, click on the like there. That would help us out a lot as well. So get our name out. Share this if you would. And, uh, and subscribe to our channel because uh, it's growing and we really, really enjoy the conversation. So if you knew something about this, maybe a family member had one, maybe... Uh, uh, maybe you rode one. Maybe you're selling them back in the day. You're like, man, yeah, man, the people that bought these cars were ballers, <laughs> right? We'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much.